I wish I could see this. If this kind of thing is happening in 1942, just imagine what it's going to be like in the year 2000. Welcome to the Petroglyphs in the Sky, the ultimate UFO show, with your host, Chad. Worldwide. Shortly after 8 p.m., the donors reported seeing a triangular shaped object with three to thousands of people who saw more than stars in the night sky. The mystery remains unsolved and controversial. It was nothing new, a black man, green and blue. On March the 13th, 1997, compelling accounts of various flights in the world of the night these lights are now referred to as the Phoenix lights. We're actually witnessed in that by five other What were these lights? What is the name of the contact? Tonight, we explore the Phoenix lights in the sky with Jeff Woolwine from PetroglyphsInTheSky.com. about uh, uh, myself. Um, I'm a native here in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I've been seeing UFOs for a number of years now. Had to get to the bottom of it. Didn't really um, take the government's word for it. Had to find out exactly what was going on for myself. So I did a lot of investigations and I come to find out that the American Indians saw UFOs too. Um, this film that you're about to see uh, is with uh, Ken Klein. How come Indians recorded on rock faces, their supernatural encounters, self-serving men tried to hide the story, annihilating their records by blasting them under a mountain of rock. But as we shall see, the Holocom story would not lay dormant under the debris of men's devices. The story has been recovered, and the truth, for our benefit, has been restored by Jeff Wolwine's incredible investigation and patient observations. But even more importantly, and more impressively, we shall see that these strange sightings long ago recorded on rock are still being seen to this day here on South Mountain. These are the pictures. Uh, that they that they drew they drew on rocks they didn't have cameras they they drew what they saw on rocks as a records uh, as a record of that's what right. they were experiencing in this Phoenix thing is, is Phoenix a valley would you call it a valley yeah uh, it's the valley of the Sun valley of um, the Sun Phoenix um, some people think it's you know Phoenicians uh -huh. uh, the land of the Giants I because see. we find a lot of petroglyphs here 
that depict giants, giants and a lot of evidence that the giants were here yeah. in Phoenix, Arizona through the rock art. And it wasn't just graffiti that they were doing, but they were actually telling a story of something important. What's going on with this one? Here we find what looks like a lizard guy because we have a tail here and we have his legs and you can see that he's in the appease pose, much like what uh, we us sky watchers do. We look up and we're like, hey, you know, what are you? Come and see us. And here is the, a depiction of what looks like a, a worm or a creature, okay? And this is the type of stuff that we're looking for here in the Valley of the Sun. Uh, in my opinion, it's, it's not a craft, but another life form. It's another creature. And this is actually depicting of what this Native American saw in the sky. And if you look up right over here, you can see another one there, all right? Now, I videotaped this. I've seen that creature there, Easter Sunday of 2009. Do you have a picture of that, a video of it? That's right. Mm -hmm. This is an amazing rock here. Why don't you explain this one to us? Here we have on this panel many spirals, and here's one representing it as it's going down, which means that the doorway for the spirits is in the ground here. We have another spiral, seems to be representing it's, it's going up. So not only do we have a doorway on the ground, but we also have a doorway in the sky. We have a, di a coyote, or a deer if you will, and he's looking up at what we might think is a spiritual being, okay? We have this worm here. What we're looking at is actually photographs of what these creatures look like. I've seen these worms in the sky here. Over here, we have a bow tie, and some of the petroglyphs here, these bow ties actually grow legs and arms and a head. And this is representing a spirit being, a UFO, if you will. On top here, you'll see that this is oriented on top, in the sky. This is one of these serpent creatures that I filmed many times here in Phoenix, Arizona. And it's, it's up high, or it's as to say that it's been seen in the sky here. He's a very powerful entity. This is one of my favorite panels here. This panel right here really depicts on what the Indians were trying to say here of South Mountain. Um, when you look at the rock art here, you're not just supposed to look at the art here, but actually what the artist is trying to tell us. And he's trying to tell us that the art is depicting the back of the landscape here. It's depicting the whole landscape. Here we have this formation here, okay? Now this represents the two pyramids that are behind us. This pyramid is, represents this pyramid here, and there's another pyramid that we will see on the other side there. Now, if you look, the pyramid is in the shape of a serpent. Okay, this is a serpent making these two pyramids. So the Indians are trying to tell us that this, there's a serpent, a big serpent, that dwells within these two pyramids here. On top, between the two valley, between the two valleys of the pyramids, it comes up and is this creature here. This is a UFO spirit creature. And to the left of him is the sun. So when the sun is in the right position, it opens up the two doorways of the pyramids for these spirit beings. You know, Jeff, words form pictures in people's minds. And when it comes to the word spirit, people have no idea what to do with a mind picture for the word spirit and so I think for most people I think it's fair to say that most people think of something in the air just flying through the air but which has no form but um, as we look at these things and as I look at some of the film you've shot what these Indians called spirits actually had form they could see them with their eyes That's right. they were really strange looking things That's right. and I'm glad you've done this work over the last five years uh, 
learning to understand what this rock art was all about in relationship to what you've seen here in this Phoenix Valley. It is remarkable. There is a spiritual world that actually has form. That's correct. And these Indians and the people that lived here were actually experiencing these forms as they looked in the sky, and that's why they wrote them down here on these rocks. While we were filming this segment, we inadvertently captured on film a spirit anomaly. Watch carefully as it appears out of nowhere and rapidly accelerates upward. Okay, that was uh, done by King Klein, and that was just a, a piece of what we did. We uh, did a lot of hiking out there and a lot of petroglyph sightings, and we even, you know, saw a UFO there. Valley landmark could be the key to deciphering mysteries in the sky. South Mountain has been a chalkboard of UFO sightings and reports for thousands of years. All right, 10 years ago, the Phoenix Lights captured world attention, of course, and opinions are still varied. Just put that down right there. Are still varied on what exactly they were, but a number of people believe that the objects seen in the sky that night have been with us for centuries, Beverly shows us records that some of Arizona's earliest residents left behind. These UFOs are out here, man, and I want to find them. Perhaps no one spends as much time on Skyward Mysteries as Jeff Woolwine. But when these lights come on, it's like somebody with a, with a switch on a wall. Boop! Here we are. The Phoenix man has hours and hours of videotaped airborne objects. He's convinced they're connected in some way to South Mountain. South Mountain has been a chalkboard of UFO sightings and reports for thousands of years. Well, when you look at these petroglyphs, you have to look at the whole landscape. Woolwine takes people on tours of the petroglyphs here pointing out rock etchings that he says look like things he's videotaped in the sky. And Jeremy Fox believes... There's definitely certain shapes on these rocks that look similar to UFOs. I think we're in a very important spot in the UFO world. Jeff Woolwine, the first person to do this. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on the show. Woolwine's passion gets him noticed. He's been interviewed dozens of times. The Cutting Edge TV show tapes in Tucson and airs in 10 cities around the country. Host Jim Rogers says... I think he's as uh, honest as the day is long. He describes his guests as top-notch, credible, and says Woolwine is one of the good guys. He's giving DVDs away to people to open their hearts and minds to this stuff. His, his heart is in this. He's not in this for profit. Woolwine's tours are free too, and you're free to believe or not. Whether you believe in UFOs or not, there is something here. And they were here a long time ago, and their sightings is recorded on the mountain. Okay, that was a news report um, in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, we should have a uh, video coming up. Shortly after 8 p.m., Zonis reported seeing a triangular-shaped object with three to thousands of people who saw more than stars in the night sky. The mystery remains unsolved and controversial. On March the 13th, 1997, compelling accounts of various lights moving over the state of Arizona. These lights are now referred to as the Phoenix Lights, were actually witnessed in at least five other cities. What were these lights? Was it an alien contact? Tonight, we explore the Phoenix Lights in the sky.
See ya. Exciting episode. Keep your eyes in the sky. You never know what you might see.